Uh, YouTube, all you crazy people in the metaverse and YouTube and beyond. Ah, well, we're out on this lovely crisp morning. And it is bloody crisp. But what a lovely day to come out on the beautiful scram. Oh, Sally, I love this bike. So I thought uh, I'd come out for a bit of a bimble and uh, we'll have a chat about the mighty Scrambler 1200 XE. What my thoughts are and uh, what I thought about it in pre-production. So I thought to myself, Lee, where's the best place you could take this beautiful Scram? Tell all these lovely people about it. Well, I'm going to take you to the... The home of Triumph, <laughs> where it all began. This used to be my second home, so today I thought I'd bring you to the uh, beautiful visitor centre. If you've never been here, you really should make time to come and have a look because uh, it really is a, a beautiful place and it's free. Yeah, you have to pay for a track tour um, or a, a factory tour, but you can pretty much rock up here any day of the week apart from Sunday and Monday and uh, you can get yourself a factory tour. Or you can just look round their beautiful visitor centre and uh, have a nice cup of tea. So that's what I thought I'd do today. I'll bring you here and uh, we'll have a talk about the scram. Well, I'm here at my second home, or what used to be my second home. I uh, thought we'd run through a few things and uh, take a look around and take you a bit of a tour and the history of the scrambler as it was and where it started, which is this uh, beautiful place. Like I say, you can take the man out of Triumph, but you can't take the Triumph out of the man. So, let's have a look at my beautiful scrambler before we go in. Here she is, look, absolutely love this bike. And I've got my top box on with all my uh, special stickers. But yeah, just absolutely beautiful. The engineering and the love that went into this bike. And every Triumph, really, you know. And they've all got uh, part of my soul blended into them, even this one, even though I only did 5,000 miles on this bike in uh, pre-production. So, uh, Speed Twin is another one of my favourites. Um, <laughs> to be fair, it is my nemesis. It's the one Triumph that tried to kill me, put me in a wheelchair for six months, but hey, that's another story. love this bike it was uh, a challenge originally set by John Bloor to two design teams within R&D and basically he gave them a brand new Bonneville each and says I want you to come up with your interpretation of what you think is a beautiful motorcycle and I gotta say they definitely did that I mean it just look at it it's an absolute piece of art I really do believe what we see in the 1200 scrambler is the essence of this bike absolutely stunning it really is no, 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 cause I love you baby, I can't let you go baby, I gotta tell you that I won't So for me, this Scrambler really does tell the story of how capable this bike is. So this Scrambler was originally ridden by a lovely guy called Ernie Vigil. Now he's a stunt rider from the, the US who became an ambassador for Triumph back in 2016 and he took this bike and he rode it in the Mexican 1000 which is a thousand mile race that covers the gnarliest just the most extreme parts of a thousand mile desert race across Mexico and he got it to the finish line in fifth place which in itself is amazing considering it was up against a field of bikes that were custom made MX's, motocross bikes, off-road bikes that were designed for this, this race and this bike really did showcase how good it is in that race, the Mexican 1000 thousand mile race. I'm so proud of every motorcycle that's uh, in this visitor centre because do you know what, every one of these motorcycles has got part of my soul blended into them. I've got some amazing stories and also some amazing projects and you really can tell the quality of the Triumph. I'm so proud to have been a part of it. So 
so yeah that was a, a brief introduction to the Trine Visitor Centre I do like going there it's just uh, you know it makes me still feel part of the brand and I think uh, that was one of the best things Trine ever did was putting that together uh, as you see the their new motocross bike was revealed today for the first time at Triumph um, in the flesh if you like what do I think? Ah, I think they're brave I think they really have took a bold move to try and conquer a market that always is already dominated by the Orange Army uh, and time will tell I think uh, as long as they can win races they'll sell bikes and that's going to be the biggest test for them now is uh, <laughs> what wins on a Sunday sells on a Monday one of the biggest things that I love about this bike is just the way it fits me the ergonomics just really suit my my six foot frame uh, I like the room it gives me in the legs I like the bars it just it just fits me like a glove and uh, that's one of the things I love about this bike apart from the styling I mean just look at it absolutely bloody beautiful I mean there is no perfect bike out there because if there was then how would bikes progress how would they develop how would they get better and uh, that's the one thing I used to love about uh, development and the development of motorcycles is year on year everything would always get better and improvements would always be made and sometimes the feedback that you would give wouldn't always get on that model but you can guarantee when it came to doing the next generation of that model that feedback was stored and they would adjust it and you could tell that what you had said on the last model would uh, improve the next model and that's development that's what it's all about yeah there's a few things on this bike I don't like for instance the keyless fob the keyless fob was always a big gripe for me so I says surely not surely if somebody is stealing my bike and they get 50 yards away from me they should fall off and they're like no Lee that's that's how it should work and I'm like surely not surely if the bike is out of range of this key it should topple over they should fall off give me the chance to run after them and give them a few digs and a few kicks and swear a few swear words and my bike is still safe although it's toppled over it's still within my possession and they're like Oh no Lee, if that was to happen, they would well be in their rights to sue you. They could sue you for any injuries occurred for falling off your bike while trying to steal it. So, for me, the, the keyless key was just a gimmick that this bike really didn't need. Uh, because a key in the ignition would have been ample and the bike would have still been as good as the bike is. It was just a piece of technology that obviously Triumph decided that they wanted to try and bring in. And I think we all said the same. That's great if it truly is keyless, but it's not. So the one thing that uh, Triumph are really good at is uh, their R&D, their, their test and development. is just that there's no other motorcycle company within the UK um, that, that test like Triumph do, um, they just don't. I found this out when obviously I, uh, I, I left Triumph and trying to find work as a development test rider in this country is near damn impossible because nobody tests like they do. Royal Enfield come close but uh, even then uh, they're nowhere near what Triumph put into their bikes and by doing that they give their engineers the best platform for them to learn their skills and hone their skills because at the end of the day engineer and design and motorcycle design is all theories and how do you do how do you make your theory become a reality well you have to test it and, and, that, and that's the thing if you don't put the testing into your motorcycles you're not going to get the quality that you get with a triumph that's for sure and you know yeah there are things that will always go wrong after production after the bike's been released but do you know that's just yet again that's that's part of development and part of motorcycles because like i say no bike is perfect but this bike is perfect for me and that's the thing and that's the thing i love about this motorcycle it, it is perfect for me <laughs> it just makes me smile oh yeah it does <laughs> so as you can see it's a lovely crisp winter's morning 
and it is bloody crisp so originally I did uh, the first 5,000 miles on the first prototype of this bike and pretty much that was all I did in development because I got moved on to other projects and I always said I would come back to this bike and I never did hence I bought one because it really did tug on my heartstrings at the time when I did the 5,000 miles and uh, unfortunately I think this bike had a rough start at the time Triumph sort of pinned all their all their advertisement, all their hopes on a certain film you know the film yeah, James Bond 007 and because of all the crazy shit that was going on with the pandemic that got put back and put back and put back and in the end Triumph couldn't hold on any longer they had to release the bike so they released the bike late and then the film came out even later and I just don't think this bike got the coverage it solely deserved at the time and that was just purely down to circumstances and like I say all you scram owners out there you let me know you let me know what you think about your scram because you know what what I'm realizing is there's a lot of love for this motorcycle a lot of love for this motorcycle indeed and on that note I'd like to say a big thank you to everybody all my new subscribers that have uh, come off the last video I was blown away I really was well thank you for uh, joining me today on this uh, on this video I hope you enjoyed it let me know in the comments below what's your uh, what's the bike that floats your boat what's the bike that makes you want to go and sit in the garage and talk dirty to it until the day comes when you get it out and ride the ass off it because that's what this bike does for me that's for sure but uh, yeah like I say hope you've enjoyed this video definitely come back for more so hit that subscribe button show us some love give us your sub and a big thumbs up thank you very much to everybody that's done that I really do appreciate it uh, it just uh, helps with the old algorithm and we are growing slowly but surely slowly but surely as you can see I haven't got the Budsy with me today he's still not very well bless him and I haven't got the uh, the tall screen hasn't come yet so I can't uh, I can't put that on I don't really want to put him on this bike uh, until it does buddy pod 4 that's nearly finished so uh, that, that's all good because I was worried how I was going to actually get him on the bike but that's sorted so on that note stay safe out there stay safe live your best life Now the chick